Hey, good morning, everybody. You know what? What a beautiful day. I can't think of a better place to be than out in North Dakota. We are going to break down the proper way for you guys to learn how to pull slow death. So you guys hang on to your heinies. We'll be right back. All right. Yeah. They're just grabbing it, huh? Nice job. Boy, I'll tell you, it certainly didn't take long. Um, you know, the thing is too, is that you guys didn't see is that we drove around for about a half hour, maybe even 45 minutes to find these fish on the locator. But Jason here, it seems like, you know, marking these fish, we didn't stop until we marked a bunch of fish. Were you catching them, caught them yesterday? Most likely they're not gonna be there the next day. So I just, I know, know the areas to look. I just drive around, try to go from 10 feet out to 30 feet, see what depth they're at. If you don't mark anything, just keep moving. Here we go. Feels like a decent fish. It's not a monster. Boy, that one I just lost felt really super heavy. Good fish, I'll just bring it in. No. Good? Yep, good, thank you. 15 inch, a great eater right there. Again, right in the top. Well, looks like a happy little life. Well, not bad for a half hour of fishing. Boy, I'll tell you, they have lit up like no tomorrow. You know, we've only been out here a half hour. And you know, like you were saying before, Jason, you know, it's amazing, you know, every day the bite can be a little bit different. And uh, today is definitely a morning bite right there. Another good eater right there. Putting that crawler on is, is everything. So let's show everybody at home exactly how that crawler needs to be put on on slow death. You go right, you gotta get right to the tip. Come around the curve. And you don't want to bunch the crawler up on it. You want that thing to be streamlined. Okay. Get it up there on the curve, and then as soon as that hook pops out, you do the pinch. Just pinch it off. Yep. And what you got to do is you constantly got to be checking it because if you get a bite and that crawler slides down, it's not going to spin right. See how that crawler's spinning in the water? That's exactly how what you want it to do. Big fish? Yeah, it's big, big, but it's nice. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's, now it's getting bigger. Yeah, I like yeah. to see that. Yeah, that's the cool part of too, again, about that, how hard these fish fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, nice walleye. Really nice walleye. I love that. It's not that you're getting old, is it? <laughs> nice fish. Really nice fish. Here we go. Another good eater right there. Just, I'm loving this, you know, like you were saying before, Jason, you know, it is amazing, you know, how that presentation has to be just absolutely perfect, the way you have that crawler on there. Speed has a lot to do with it. You know, just how you control your boat. You know, so we're gonna break all these things down and, and show you guys exactly so you guys can be more successful on coming out and pulling slow death and catching more fish. And it doesn't have to be out in North Dakota. It can be in Wisconsin, it can be in Minnesota, it can be anywhere in the whole country. This is just a really good technique. I was wrapping my bottom bouncer up, my rig up, and you were laughing at me. I go, what are you laughing at? You're like, hey, I have a better way to, to, to wrap up your rig. Okay, when we're running these slow death rigs, we're running anywhere from four to eight foot liters. So okay. obviously you cannot hook it here and get the slack out of the slide because your bottom boat is going to jam up on the rod tip. Right. So what I do is I go to the, the carrier of the eye, not in the eye, because you don't want to nick that ceramic. Okay. Go right around the character. Yep. Carrier, come around the reel like this. Well, you came around the reel, you hooked it right down on the bottom. Yep. Okay. Right around the reel here. Okay, it locks you got it your, in there. And you got your bottom bouncer bouncing around like that. I go around the rod. Just kind of turn it. Yep, yep, and go back through the eye right there. Now look at it. That's perfect. Hooked up. A little bit of a lull there, you know, and that happens, you know, bite windows. Things come on, things come off. Nope, good fish though. I'll take that one all day long. Again, it's funny how they're all hooked right up in that top of the mouth right there. Again, that's that hook twisting my back and forth. Good fish. Hey Jason, what an incredible morning we had. I mean, the fishing was absolutely fantastic, you know, but there is definitely a key to pulling slow death. So today we're using an ounce and a half bottom bouncer, okay? And basically we're using a super braid, um, going to the bottom bouncer, and then we're using a 10 pound XT line in our leader length on this one's probably- About six foot. About six foot right here. And here's an interesting part now. This is a little different 
low death hook than I'm used to using. This actually has a built-in swivel in it, a ball bearing swivel, which obviously allows that, that, that hook to spin a lot easier. When we're going slower, it's just a slower roll. Yep. And if you speed up, then it starts going really, really fast. And some, day, some days, don't get me wrong, they want it faster. Okay. And a lot of days are down to 0 0.07, 0 0.06, just barely crawling. You know, another reason why we use the, the mono and not the, not the uh, fluorocarbon is because this mono will actually lift a little bit when this is spinning where the fluorocarbon sink. And another thing, like this is a river system, so like when we were up further and it was dirtier water, there you could have got away with probably a two and a half foot lead. A shorter lead. Right, so now we get out here and it's clearer water, you want to get, get your bait away from that bottom bouncer. And then the bottom bouncer size too is I like to use a one, one and a half ounce. And what? Until about 25 foot. Otherwise, as we start getting deeper, like these fish roll out to 35, 40, you're gonna have to have so much line out, and then it's hard, harder to keep that bottom bouncer. You want that bottom bouncer on an angle like this. So the more line you get out, the more it gets like this, and then it has a tendency of falling over. That's an interesting, I never even thought about so that. So I, the weight really has to do with the amount of, of water, line. And, the, and water you're fishing. Okay, yep. yep. So now, when I'm in, tw say, 20 foot of water using this, say I got 30 foot of line out. Yep. So now when I get up to 35, 40 foot, I find a little too much, so I'm about the same amount of line. Right. So you have to keep that line more of a 45 degree angle. Once you start getting that scope way out, then this doesn't work properly. Okay. And, and when it comes to a bite, I mean, there's some days where obviously the bite's on, and we saw that today, right away this morning, the bite was a little bit slower. The fish were the, the, the fish were a lot finny, more finicky. Yep. They would grab it, drop it, grab it, drop it. Yeah. And then we had a window that opened up that like everything, like you can see these fish that Lee caught, just absolutely inhaled it, right? Correct. Correct. I kind of, I let that rod tip load up and I'll actually just follow it back a you'll, little bit. So you'll start dropping your... Dropping it back a little bit. Let him eat it so he doesn't feel that rod tip and then a nice sweeping motion. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. You know, obviously right now it's about 11 o'clock and the sun is up pretty high. Right. What, where we started finding the fish, let's talk about that, what side of the, the reef okay. they were on. Yeah, or the, what, what you would call this an underwater point. Yep, underwater points and humps. Like we're fishing 22 foot of water, but you go out 30 yards and it's 50, 60 foot of water, so it's a sharp break. Yep. So what I did with the sun being on an angle like this, I went to the shade side of the hump. That's where the fish were laying, it was on the shade side. Well, I think when it comes to fishing, there's nothing that you can say that every time it's exactly the same. This is what you do, there's no adjustments to it. The thing I love about fishing and hunting is that it's always changing, right? right? You're always adapting. It's the hunt, man. Yeah, it's, it's the it's hunt. It's figuring it out and putting the piece of the puzzle together to make it all work is your, your reward, you know? Yeah, I would agree on that 100%. You know, and the worse the fishing is, the harder I work. I don't give up. Yep. Just never never give up. Keep adjusting. Well, I tell you what, my friend, let's uh, rock and roll back, and uh, Lisa is cleaning all these fish. Right. <laughs> my job. I'll clean one out right, I'll clean them. That's one thing, you know, when you got two fishing guides in the boat, you know what, you never mind cleaning fish. Nope. You know what? Nope. All right, let's go Thanks, back. Buddy. All right, man, let's go back and clean some fish. I'll tell you, I hope everybody learned a lot. I'll tell you what, Jason, you really broke that down about the whole thing about pulling slow death. Gave you a lot of different options, folks, as far as things to need to adjust to. But it's all about learning, and that's what the outdoors are all about. It is a great day to be alive, and the best part is we're going to see you guys and gals again next week, and thanks for joining us.